change with the flow of time, the impulses they engender in man, and the manifestations that ensue from them, always remain the same. Therefore, if we insert the useful information and true knowledge we have already attained within the inner factors that engender these impulses and manifestations, as well as in the works that I have mentioned, we can fully count on this knowledge reaching our very remote descendants, some of whom will decipher it and thereby enable all the others to utilize it for their good. The question now is only this by what means can we bring about such a transmission through the various human, apocalmas, and soldinokas. For my part, I propose that this be done through the universal law called the Law of Sevenfoldness. The Law of Sevenfoldness exists on the earth and will exist forever and in everything. For instance, in accordance with this law, the light ray is composed of seven independent colors. In every definite sound there are seven different independent tones. In every state of man there are seven different independent sensations. Furthermore, every definite form can be made up of only seven different dimensions. Every mass remains at rest on the earth only as a result of seven reciprocal thrusts and so on. Well then, we wish that knowledge existing today, both what we have personally attained and what has reached us from times past, just that knowledge which all agree will be useful for our remote descendants, be indicated in some way or other in these human, apocalmas, and Solinogas, so that in the future it may be perceived by the clear reason of man by means of this great universal law. The law of sevenfoldness, I repeat, will exist on the earth as long as the universe exists, and it will be seen and understood by men in all times as long as human thought exists. And therefore it can boldly be said that the knowledge indicated in this manner and the works of man will also exist forever on the earth. And as for the method itself, that is to say, the mode of transmission by the application of this law, this, in my opinion, can be worked out as follows. In all the works that we will intentionally create on the basis of this law for the purpose of transmission to remote generations we shall intentionally introduce certain inexactitudes, also conformable to law, and in these lawful inexactitudes we will place, in an intelligible manner, the content of some true knowledge or other in the possession of men of the present day. At the same time, to serve as the key for deciphering those inexactitudes in that great law, we will insert in our work something like a legomanism, and we will secure its transmission from generation to generation through initiates of a special kind, who we shall call initiates of art. Quote, and we shall call them thus because the whole process of such a transmission of knowledge to remote generations through the law of sevenfoldness will not be natural but artificial. And so, my most worthy and impartial colleagues, it must now be clear to you that if, for some reason or other, the useful information concerning knowledge already attained by men about past events on the earth fails to reach our descendants through genuine initiates, then thanks to this new means of transmission I have proposed, men of future generations will always have the possibility of discovering and understanding for themselves, if not everything now existing on the earth, at least those fragments of common knowledge which chance to reach them through these works of the hands, 
of our contemporaries as well as through those various ceremonies existing today, in which, in accordance with this great law of sevenfoldness, and by means of these, artificial, indications of ours, we shall now put what we wish. Quote. With these words the great Aksharpansiar concluded his report. This speech of his aroused considerable excitement, and a noisy discussion broke out among all the members of the club of the adherents of Legomanism, with the outcome that then and there they unanimously decided to do as the great Aksharpansiar had suggested. A brief interval was then allowed for a meal, after which they all assembled again, and this second general meeting lasted throughout the night. They reached the unanimous decision to begin the following day making what are called, Minia Images, or, as the contemporary three brain beings call them, Models. Of various productions, and to try to devise the most suitable means of indication, on the principles laid down by the great Aksharpansiar, and then to bring these, minia images, or, models, of theirs to the club where they would be exhibited and explained to the other members. Within two days, many of them already began bringing the Many images, they had made and showing them with the necessary explanations, while others began demonstrating every variety of those procedures which beings of that planet carried out on special occasions in the process of their ordinary existence, as they still do today. The models they brought included different combinations of colors and various forms of constructions and buildings, and the being manifestations they demonstrated included the playing of different musical instruments, the singing of every kind of melody, and also the exact representation of certain experiencings foreign to them, and so on and so forth. Shortly thereafter, for the sake of convenience, the members of the club divided themselves into a number of groups, and devoted each seventh part of the period of time they called a week, or, as they would say, each day, to the presentation and explanation of their productions relating to one particular branch of knowledge. interesting to note that this definite period of the flow of time known as a week has always been divided into seven days, and this division was made by the beings of the continent of Atlantis, who expressed in it that same law of sevenfoldness with which they were quite familiar. On the continent of Atlantis the days of the week were called as follows. Adash Sikra Evo Sikra Zaborg Sikri Mito Sikra Mito Sikra Lika Sikra Sonia Sikri These names changed many times and at present the beings there name the days of the week thus Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Well then, as I have just told you they devoted each day of the week to productions in one or another special branch of knowledge, either works of their hands, or some other form of consciously designed being manifestation, thus, Monday was devoted to the first group, and this day was called the, Day of Religious and Civil Ceremonies. Tuesday was allotted to the second group, and was called the, Day of Architecture. Wednesday was called the Day of Painting, Thursday, the Day of Religious and Popular Dances, Friday, the Day of Sculpture, Saturday, the Day of the Mysteries or, as it was also called, the Day of the Theater, Sunday, the Day of Music and Song, on Monday, that is, on the day of religious and civil ceremonies, 
The learned beings of the first group demonstrated various ceremonies in which the fragments of knowledge selected for transmission were indicated by means of inexactitudes in the law of sevenfoldness, chiefly through inexactitudes in the law conformable movements of the participants. Let us suppose, for instance, that the leader of the given ceremony, the priester, according to contemporaries, the minister, had to raise his arms toward heaven. This posture of his infallibly demanded, in accordance with the law of sevenfoldness, that his feet should be placed in a certain position, but these Babylonian learned beings intentionally placed the feet of the leader of the ceremony not as they would normally be placed in accordance with this law, but, otherwise. Single foot. And in general it was just in these, otherwise as, that the learned beings of this group, by means of a conventional what is called, alphabet, indicated in the postures of the participants in the given religious ceremony the ideas they intended to transmit to their remote descendants. On Tuesday, the day of architecture, the learned beings belonging to the second group brought various models for buildings and other constructions designed to last a very long time. And they planned these buildings not in exact accordance with the stability ensuing from the law of sevenfoldness, nor as the beings there were mechanically accustomed to do, but, otherwise. For instance, according to all the data, the cupola of a certain construction had to rest on four columns of a certain thickness and definite strength. placed this cupola on only three columns, and they calculated the reciprocal thrust, or, as it is also expressed, the reciprocal resistance, ensuing from the law of sevenfoldness for supporting the surplanetary weight, not from the columns alone, but also from other unusual combinations ensuing from the same law of sevenfoldness, which was known to the mass of ordinary beings of that. Time. In other words, they calculated the required resistance of the columns chiefly by taking into account the force of the weight of the cupola itself. Or to give another example a certain cornerstone, according to all the data established there, both mechanically from the practice of centuries and thanks to the fully conscious calculations of certain beings with reason, ought infallibly to have a definite mass corresponding to a certain force of resistance, but on the contrary, they cut and set this cornerstone in such a way that it did not correspond at all to the aforementioned data, and on the basis of the law of sevenfoldness they calculated the mass and force of resistance required for the support of the superimposed weight from the setting of the lower stones, which in their turn they did not set according to the established custom but according to calculations based on the manner of setting the still lower stones, and so on. And it was just by setting these stones in these unusual architectural combinations derived from the law of sevenfoldness that they indicated, also by means of a conventional, alphabet, the content of some useful information, this group of learned members of the Club of the Adherents of Legomanism also indicated what they wished in their minia images, or models, of proposed constructions by utilizing the law called the vibrate scar, that is, the law of the action of vibrations arising in the atmosphere of enclosed spaces. This law, no knowledge of which has reached contemporary beings of that planet, was then well known to the beings there, who were quite aware that the size and form of an enclosed space, and also the volume of air it contains, influence beings in a particular way. 
analyzing this law, they indicated their various ideas as follows. Let us suppose that, in keeping with the character and purpose of some building or other, and in accordance with the law of sevenfoldness and the practice established by centuries, its interior would necessarily evoke certain sensations in a definite lawful sequence. Then, by utilizing the law of Devibrate Scar, they designed the interior of this proposed building in such a way that these sensations would be evoked in the beings who entered, not in the anticipated lawful sequence but in some other order. And it was just in these deviations from the lawful sequence of sensations that they inserted what they wished to transmit. Wednesday, the day of painting, was devoted to the study of the combinations of different colors. On that day the learned beings of this group brought for demonstration all sorts of objects for domestic use made of very durable colored materials, such as, carpets, fabrics, and, chinkruaris, that is, drawings in various colors on skin specially tanned to last many centuries. On these objects were drawn, or embroidered in many colored threads, various scenes of nature on that planet and different forms of beings breeding there. Before continuing to speak about the way in which these terrestrial learned beings indicated certain fragments of knowledge in their combinations of colors, I must point out one fact concerning this subject, which is most distressing for your favorites and which took place in their presence, again on account of those abnormal forms of daily existence established by them themselves. This fact I wish to explain to you concerns the gradual deterioration in the quality of those organs of perception, which are formed in the presence of every kind of being, especially the organ that interests us at present, namely, the organ for perceiving and distinguishing what is called the blending of center of gravity vibrations, which reach their planet from the spaces of the universe. I am referring to what is known as the common integral vibration issuing from all sources of actualizing, which the learned being of Sharpancy are called the white ray, and also to the separate blendings of center of gravity vibrations, which are perceived and distinguished by beings as different tonalities of color. from the time of the arising of the three brain beings of the planet Earth, before the period when the organ Kundabuffer was implanted in them, and later when this organ was totally removed from their presence, and even much later, beginning from the second Transipalmian catastrophe almost up to the time of our third flight in person to the surface of that planet, the organ of sight was actualized in them with the same sensitivity of perception, as in the common presence of all ordinary free brain beings of the whole of our great universe. During these periods I have mentioned, in all the free brain beings arising on your planet, this organ was formed with the requisite sensitivity to perceive the blendings of the separate center of gravity vibrations of the white ray, and to distinguish one-third of all the tonalities of color, found in general in the presences of the planets as well as in all other cosmic concentrations, great and small. Objective science has precisely established that the number of separate blendings of center of gravity vibrations issuing from the common integral vibration, that is, the number of tonalities of color, is exactly equal to 1, Colton Panas, which, according to the calculations of the terrestrial free brain beings, would amount to 5, 764, 801 tonalities. Only 
a third of this total number of blendings are tonalities, with the exception of the one tonality which is accessible only to the perception of our all autocratic endlessness, that is, 1, 921, 600 tonalities, can be perceived as different colors, by all ordinary beings on whatever planet of our great universe they arise. But if the three-brained beings complete the perfecting of their highest part, and their organ for the perception of visibility thereby acquires the sensitivity of what is called a Snopian sight, they can then distinguish two-thirds of the total number of tonalities existing in the universe which, according to terrestrial calculation, amounts to three, 843, 200 different tonalities of color. And only those three brain beings who perfect their highest being part to the state of what is called Ishmech, become able to perceive and distinguish the total number of blendings or tonalities, with the exception of that one tonality which, as I have already told you, is accessible to the perception of our all-maintaining creator alone. Although I intend to explain to you later in detail how and why in the presences of Insipalmian cosmic concentrations every definite formation acquires, from evolving and involving processes, the property of producing various effects upon this organ of beings, nevertheless I do not consider it superfluous to touch upon this question now. First of all it must be said that the common integral vibration, like every already definite cosmic formation, is formed according to the completed result of the fundamental cosmic law of the holy Heptaparaparshino, namely, that cosmic law which the three brain beings of the planet Earth of the Babylonian period called the law of sevenfoldness, in other words, this vibration consists of seven complexes of results are, as is sometimes said, seven classes of vibrations issuing from cosmic sources, whose arising and further action depend on seven other sources, which in their turn arise and depend on seven further ones, and so on right up to the first most holy, unique, seven property vibration issuing from the most holy prime source. And all these together compose the common integral vibration of all sources of actualization of everything that exists in the universe, and later, thanks to their transformations, they actualize in the presences of the cosmic insipalmian concentrations the number of different tonalities of color I have mentioned. As for the details of the most holy, unique, seven property vibration, these you will understand only when I have explained to you in its proper time, as I have already many times promised you, all about the great fundamental laws of world creation and world maintenance. And meanwhile, as regards this question, you ought to know that when this common integral vibration, which the terrestrial free brain beings call the white ray, enters with the presence proper to it into the spheres of its possible transformation in the presence of an insipalmian planet, there occurs in it, just as in the case of every definite cosmic arising having the possibility of further actualization, that cosmic process called Jartklam, that is to say, it itself remains as a presence, but its essence disintegrates, as it were, and engenders processes for evolution and involution by the separate center of gravity vibrations of its arising, and these processes are actualized thus certain groups of center of gravity vibrations separate themselves from the others and are transformed into third ones, and so on.
During these transformations, the common integral vibration, or white ray, acts through its center of gravity vibrations upon other ordinary processes taking place nearby in intraplanetary and surplanetary arisings and decompositions, and owing to kindred vibrations, and in accordance with surrounding conditions, its center of gravity vibrations blend and become part of the common presence of these definite intraplanetary or surplanetary formations in which these processes are taking place. So, my boy, during my personal descents to the planet Earth, I noted, at first without any conscious intention on the part of my reason, and later I quite intentionally verified, the progressive worsening of this being Morgan and all your favorites. Deteriorating century by century, the sensitivity of perception of that organ, by means of which there chiefly proceeds in the presence of free brain beings what is called the automatic saturation by externals, which serves as the basis for the possibility of natural self-perfecting, had been diminished to such a point that at the time of our fifth stay there, during the period called by contemporary beings the period of the greatness of Babylon, your favorites could perceive and distinguish the blendings of the center of gravity vibrations of the white ray at most up to the third degree of its sevenfold strata, that is, only up to 343 different tonalities of color. interesting to note that quite a number of the three brain beings of the Babylonian epoch already suspected the gradual deterioration of the sensitivity of this organ of theirs, and certain of them even founded a new society in Babylon, which launched a peculiar movement among the painters of that time. This peculiar movement had the following program to find out and elucidate the truth only by means of the tonalities existing between white and black. And they executed all their works using exclusively the tonalities from black to white. When I found out about that particular movement among the Babylonian painters, they were already using about 1500 quite distinct shades of the color, gray. Single quote. This new movement in painting made a great stir among the beings who were striving to learn truth at least in something, and it even gave rise to another and still more. Peculiar movement this time among the beings then known in Babylon as olfactorists, who studied and devised new combinations of concentrations of vibrations acting in a particular way on the sense of smell of beings, and producing definite effects on their general psyche, that is to say, among those beings who made it their aim to find the truth by means of smells. in imitation of the followers of the new movement in painting founded a similar society the stated purpose of which was to seek the truth and the nuances of smells given off between the moment of the action of cold at freezing and the moment of the action of heat at decomposition as the painters had done with colors they also found between these two limits of smell about 700 very definite gradations, which they employed in their experiments. I do not know where these two peculiar movements in Babylon would have led if a newly appointed mayor of the city, soon after our arrival there, had not started prosecuting the followers of that second movement, since, with their already sufficiently keen sense of smell, they had begun to get wind of and unwittingly to expose certain of his 
shady dealings, with the result that he used every possible means to suppress everything connected not only with that second, 